Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, our subject tonight is very simple, but very profound. Tell the neighbor, the subject is crucify Jesus. Shout the subject to one more person. Crucify Jesus. Put Jesus to death. Get rid of Jesus. We are actually upon the week that many people are celebrating the resurrection of Christ. And I think it's important that we always understand that we really don't know the actual time or date of the resurrection, nor do we know the actual timing of the crucifixion. But nevertheless, when it comes to Christianity, our faith hinges upon the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Because without a death, there is no resurrection. And without the resurrection, there is no second coming. And without the second coming, there really is, again, no such thing as Christianity. And so I think it's important tonight that when we begin to look at the life of Jesus, in particular tonight, his crucifixion, that from a Christian standpoint, we really need to know why we believe what we believe. Because we're living in dangerous times. Tell that to somebody. Say, say, say I, I agree with the pastor. We are living in some dangerous times. And I, I say that because though we see thousands of years ago an angry mob trying to destroy Jesus or yelling to the point, crucify Jesus, though the words are not the same in our day and time, there are still those who seek to destroy Jesus. There are still those who seek to try to destroy Christianity, to overthrow the faith of many folk. And that's the reason I'm telling you, as, as, as time continues to go on, you really need to understand why you believe what you believe, and you need to so believe it to the point to where nobody can take it out of your heart. Because as, as Jesus uh, return continues to draw near we see an onslaught of people who are attacking Christianity now in one sense when the disciples were first called Christians it was meant to be an insult it, it, it was not meant as something that they said to people in order to honor them but again it was deemed to be an insult in other words, when they labeled them as Christians, they were basically saying to them that you all are followers of that man, Jesus. Listen carefully. And when many of them said it, they were saying to them that they were following a hypocrite or a pretender. And so when they labeled them Christians, again, in, in one sense, it was a, a, a criticism because they were saying to them that you are following that man who claimed to be something that he was not. You are following the liar. You are following the one that, that folk thought he would do this, that, and the other, but he ended up dying a horrible death. And, and so to be labeled a Christian at the start was seen as an insult. And why is that important? Because I think it's important because, again, when you look in our day and time, folk are always trying to mock Jesus. Even when you look at television, that there are certain folk that always got to try to mock or make fun of Jesus. As if he was not real, as if he is not the soon coming king, as if he's not truly alive and well and, and yes, died but rose again just as he said. And so it is so vital that, that we understand what we believe and that we understand that it is, in fact, the word of God. 
Because what's going to happen this week is that a whole lot of people are not really going to take this week seriously. Uh, that, that, that you have carnal-minded Christians that, that instead of us really looking at what our Lord and Savior did for us, you have church folk that are carnal, more carnal-minded than sinners when it comes to this week. See, see for, for some, this week is simply a, 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 an occasion to throw a cookout. An occasion to get together with relatives. It's an occasion to, to hunt some eggs. It's, it's an occasion to go out and buy a new suit or something. But, but it can never be that simple for a child of God. Because every time we come up on this season, it should really deal with us. If it don't deal with nobody else, it should prick the heart of every born again believer to know what our Savior did for us and not allow anybody to destroy him. But to be bold enough to make a stand and know what this week is all about. Yeah, it may not be the exact week that he died, but I do recognize he did die for me. I do recognize that he was crucified for my sins. I recognize that people set him up thinking they was getting rid of him, but didn't realize that the Lord was defeating the devil in the open. Let me deal with it tonight. So when it comes to crucifixion, the two things that you always need to associate with the cross, number one is pain, is suffering. You never need to lose sight of the fact that Jesus the man suffered a horrendous death just to redeem us back from sin. And without him suffering, there is no remission or removal of sin. Without him shedding his precious blood, we would still be sinners doomed for hell. We would still be under the curse with no way of ever getting free. And so it was his suffering that released us. It was his suffering that redeemed us. Pastor, why is that so important? Because it should always remind us that Christianity, part of it is suffering. You got to go through some things. God forbid this generation that only wants to prosper and do doesn't want to suffer. Well, see how quiet we are. A lot of us, we, we all about being blessed, but when it's time to suffer, we think crazy when we have to go through. Not realizing that the same way Jesus suffered in order to bless us as Christians, sometimes we have to suffer for the sake of being a blessing to somebody else. Oh, God. Somebody's going through something tonight, but it ain't all about you. You are doing what your Savior did. You are suffering for the sake of the gospel. You are suffering because of how connected you are to God. You're being persecuted because of your faith. You're being talked about because of your faith. You can lose a job because of your faith. You can lose a friend because of your faith. Kinfolk will despise you because of your faith faith he suffered to redeem people who were not really worthy of redemption because we really didn't deserve what he did but again he took our place to remove a curse that was upon us he himself became a curse in order to free us, in order to let us go free. Somebody had to die, to die. 